Hello everybody, welcome to another basing episode. Once again, replica nature, glass, snow, and foam, and also water effects. Looking to do a couple of different things here. We're looking to get some snow and some icicles on this Song of Ice and Fire unit. Ranger Vanguard, I think that's what these lads are. Obviously, we get some stuff on the bases. We got to get some stuff on the movement tray. And the goal is to have a look in something like this right here. This is a unit of free folk. And absolutely had a blast doing these guys. So you can see all the crushed glass snow there. Lots of advantages to the crushed glass snow. Instead of just the kind of powdery snow that you see all the time with this stuff and this stuff. You can actually get a couple of different effects. You get the, the puffy white snow. You get melted snow. You get all kinds of nifty things. Now that gloss gel that you saw. See this right here? Hanging off there. Look at that little icicle. There's a bunch of icicles hanging off of these trees here. Thought we could do some of that again. Maybe even maybe even do a little bit of snow being kicked off the horses. So it's not one of these. Yeah, see? Here maybe we actually have some of that snow like uh, that's just flinging off of their hooves maybe we even have a little bit of the snow and crushed glass up here on their cloaks because believe me even just walking around the neighborhood here two blocks to the store i don't even mean a blizzard that will be on my hat and anywhere where there's no say body heat being transferred that stuff's going to accumulate so and you can see we didn't really bother doing much with the painting on the base very minimal right wanted to be as dark as possible so that we are going to be able to have all this luscious snow. We're also going to break out some of these armored wolf grass tufts as well. So that we can just have a couple of things out here so that we can actually put some of the snow on there. It's kind of fun to have that as well. Now again, we've got the movement tray to do. And the miniatures. So that's going to require something like this. It's just the lid of a butter container. And it's kind of neat because see all these little areas that are on the side, you can actually have your water in there. It works great. And then, of course, we have some of our craft brushes right here. These are 20, 25 cents a piece, whatever. Nice and cheap. We're going to use those especially for our snow effects. We're going to have ourselves some water on hand. This is kind of neat. Have a little spray bottle like this. So what we want to do in the, the next segment here is just start getting down to the bases themselves and putting some snow on there going over how you would mix this stuff, kind of the safer way to do it, the easier way to do it, and some of those different options for different types of snow. Going to get to that next. A few things just want to talk about before we actually start to get that snow put onto the bases. First of all, these are the Armored Wolf Grass Tufts, and this is the stuff we're going to be using over here. Uh, it works great for winter, but this is also in another tutorial that we did same tufts desert base so it's not like well you're just stuck with okay well this i can only use it on a snow base no i'm using it on a desert base right here so that's a, actually a Diwali printed miniature right there and here's my little my little poquito right there we're just gonna see if there's some good places to chuck these bits now that the glue on these things really does an amazing job i'm just gonna find a place to chuck one of these things here and there's different sizes different heights different shapes you can see just how sturdy that glue is let me throw this right over here and the nice thing is unlike some of the other grass tufts this glue is really flexible which means on rough bases like this i can really push this stuff down it's uh, really amazing. Again, these are Replica Nature Grass Tufts by Armored Wolf. So we're just going to shove this on here. Look at that. I can pop that right down into all the crevice there. Uh, one over here, like so. And uh, well, look at this big old tuft right here. Where would we want that to go? I'm going to have it go there. Don't need to have a ton of these things. And uh, there's some 3D printed bits on this tray and the bases from Make It Epic Basing. Their stuff is uh, spectacular. I have to say, I really, 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 really love it. 
it's amazing. Okay, so there's some some grass stuff there. We'll worry about the tray later. So again, armored wolf, replica nature, grass stuffs, fabulous stuff. If you want to, if you're worried that people say, oh my gosh, glass, crushed glass, that, that's dangerous, whatever. Well, if you want to breathe it, you know, if you have it floating through the air or if you get it, you know, on your fingers and stick your finger in your eye, that could be probably not a good idea. Everybody's got masks. Everybody's got gloves. I mean, everybody has them now. They're <laughs> for years now. Everybody's used to having those. So if you, if you feel like you want to do that, you wear your mask, you wear your gloves, just like you would maybe wherever, where those uh, rules are needed. So just a little bit of a safety thing right there if you feel a little bit nervous about that. Now, here is also another way to sort of control the medium here. That's why I like this, because it's, it sort of contains it, right? It's not going to fall over the side. If it's going to do anything, it's going to fall down in here. Then you could just throw this thing away. All right, so you don't have to worry so much about it. Now, Liquitex also has extra heavy gloss gel. If you're just mixing it with the snow, it doesn't have to be the gloss gel. But just think about it. If you want that melted snow that would have a little more gloss to it, you would probably want this, right? Also, if you want icicles, you're going to want this. Later on in the episode here, I'll show you an entirely different use for these two things and uh, actually just about water effects which is why you see the water effects right here so what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our craft brushes and we are going to throw some of this out onto our little uh little disposable palette right here boom like so so there we go now what we want to do is here uh, also mix a little bit of water with this because this stuff, it's, it's. I've had it for a while now, and that's where a little a little spritzer comes in here. I'll spritz that a bit there. Now this would be perfect for doing say fire effects or water effects, but for a crushed glass snow, maybe not quite so much. What we don't want to do is turn this into some some kind of soupy mix or whatever necessarily because. Uh, we want the body. See, see how that's kind of fluffy right there? So you want those snow piles. You want those snow piles. This is the way to go. This is the way to get them. And you see, as I mix this now, it's, the, it's a little bit softer than it was. Here, we'll get some more water into this. Just trying to soften this up as much as I can. Now, it might be a little bit difficult to see, I don't know, the snow itself because, well, everything is just white. And, of course, on camera, white can be a little bit of a pain to show up. Okay, there we are. There you are. Look at that. So nice. It's kind of, uh, it's again, not a thinned down mix. We've just sort of reconditioned it a little bit. I would suggest just getting the smaller container as much as now if you're doing a giant terrain piece which i've done i've done whole rivers with this and other things well then maybe the bigger jar is okay because you're going to use it but it's kind of a i don't want to say a use it or lose it sort of thing but you just don't want to have a huge jar and then risk that you don't use it in time and it starts to get a little bit uh a little crispy okay we're just going to try and get some water in that little side pocket over there. Okay. Now this, we don't want to have too much of this out there at any one time. A, a big stack of this is okay, but this a little bit at a time. And that's going to go over here. You can always mix more. You can always mix more of it. Uh, you just don't want to make, have a big giant batch and then it's all set and you really can't do much with it. So I'm just going to meet these together. So you can see here, this mix has a whole lot more of the gloss gel than the snow. This is going to be more melty snow. That would be good on tree branches where you want to have, oh, say icicles, because icicles, well, snow is melting, right? The water drips off, becomes an icicle. But if you want to have that thicker snow, the puffier sort of white snow, 
Well, you can see what's happening here. So that's much thicker. Boom, look at that. Big old blob of snow right there. I usually go somewhere in between. Not too thick. Not too too liquid. I I know I've got some other some older videos where I was doing uh some muddy snow and I I might also do that. That's more for an infantry kind of a thing. Now this is the other reason uh, why I like to this because see that big old blob like that? Well, that would be really good for having uh, off the end of a, say, a horse's hoof, right? For that snow that's kind of a, being kicked up by our horsey. I'm going to go with this one here. Now, placing the snow, I think it's a bit easier with this material also. Sometimes you want to have a second brush. But you can see how is we pushed it on there, or placed it on, and now we're kind of pulling it and pushing it make it sort of go down into the crevices here again we can always mix more so we're going to push this down into that crevice there and then smooth it out a little bit and then when we don't have very much on the brush what i'm going to do is sort of dry brush over the top of our grass so now it looks like we have a little bit of snow in our grass which is really a fun thing. Now here, getting at a big old gap here between these rocks, uh, I think that's where our snow should go instead of on top of the rock. I don't want to completely wipe out my base. I want the rocks to stick through. Like so. And you can see why I just didn't invest a whole lot of time then in painting a lot of these areas. The more melted I make the snow, well, the more translucent it's going to be. So maybe I do a little bit more painting there of the of the base. Now, people see those small containers and they say, well, that's not going to last very long. I have never ceased to be amazed at just how many armies, seriously, armies that I could make using this very same material. I, I never would have imagined, I would have thought, gosh, I'm going to need three or four jars of this stuff. And you really don't. And, of course, if you do the melted snow, you'll need even less, right? Because you'll have more of the heavy gloss gel than you will of the snow itself. So you can see I'm kind of spreading this out. See how it gets translucent there? Maybe, again, that is partially melted snow for whatever reason. You will want to use brushes that are really, really, really clean because this stuff will, uh, yeah, you'll, if there's any paint on your brush, like say you're using inks or something like that, this will regenerate those, that, that color. And then you're going to end up with something I think that you're not wanting. And that is purple snow, brown snow, something in your snow that you are not going to want probably gonna I guess just to throw a wild stab out there that's probably not something that you want see I could have this and get a little blob of this here we could have it sort of see it look at that. see a nice a puffy blob right there that could sort of hang over the edge of that rock like so so I'm going to say that's enough of that. Make me another mix like this. Okay, and then we will do the same as we've done before. See that uh, when I tipped that over, it went down into that little uh, part of the tray instead of just all over my table or whatever. Again, if this is something that, that you're worried about, maybe... You know, the, the crushed glass stuff, gloves and masks, right? You don't have to talk on a video. Well, you probably don't have to talk on a video like I do. So that's probably something you don't have to worry about as much. That's why I don't have the gloves or the, the mask, because it just doesn't work for doing the videos. There's no way to have those two things combined. Now, I might just uh, 
Again, spritz a little water into the side here just to have some. So you can see that's kind of dried. So, but then the more of my gloss gel goes in there. It's not quite so crumbly anymore. Then a little bit of water. There we go. See that uh, even spritz it directly like that. And like I said, once you're done with this, you could just chuck this into the garbage. And you don't have to worry about it anymore. And there will not be very much waste. I mean, I have... There's basically none. But by the time I'm done with my project and such, there is very infinitesimal amounts of waste. Now, see that See how the brush gets a little bit uh, filled up like that? That's why I always have another brush on hand. Now, this is a bit of a wide open area right here. You could use the Woodland Scenic Still Water for this. It works. I've used that a bunch of times. However, uh, it doesn't quite have the body that this does, I would say. Well, not quite. It doesn't. It definitely doesn't. And it's uh, usually better for making the uh, that melted snow, I would say, than this type of snow. Again, we're going to dry brush that over the our foliage here let's get some of this on this rock again am i looking to cover it completely definitely not where else could this go i'm going to shove some of this over here and see i'm going to grab one of these uh brushes just didn't have anything on it and it's a little bit easier to shove some of that into here so having a couple of brushes on hand not a bad thing work around our rocks and again try to make sure that there's not too many of the brush marks in the snow either. See how we're kind of spreading this out a little bit here? Again, that makes it a little bit more translucent, not quite like just a pile of snow. And I said I can probably go with a little bit more back here. The basing stuff again is just some bulletin board cork. That's all it is for all the rocks. Uh, some of the woodland, uh, sorry, some of the Luke's APS ground cover. And then the Make It Epic 3D printed bits. Those are just amazing what those can do. So you can see again, we've uh, filled around everything. We haven't lost all of the rocks. Let me uh, try this again here. Use this. See if I can't get that all the way down into there. Okay, spread that around. We'll have to see if you want some down into the uh, that log. And again, it's a basing bit from Make It Epic Basing. So uh, printed on the Sonic Mini 4K with the Soraya Smoky Black Resin. And I've done more and more videos on the Patreon page that use the various basing bits. Uh, what's, what's great is that you can you could scale that up or down. You could scale that down for 15 mil. You could scale it up for 72 mil, 54 mil. You're not stuck with just one scale. Much as I love just the, the cast resin basing bits, the problem is they're one use. You're one and done. You got one, you use it, you don't have any more after that. So uh, that's what I really love about the 3D printed stuff. And of course, uh, sometimes it might be too big. Again, we'll get some of our snow 
in there. Just uh, can't you can see we're kind of going a little bit here. Look, I'm even taking some of the water and spreading that out. So maybe that's that's more melted snow right there. Okay, let me see what happens. If I just try to throw a little bit of snow down into here. Okay. Bam, there you go. There you are. How's about some more over here too? Get using the water. Spread this out. Melted snow. I have tried other mediums. It, it just doesn't work. You cannot do the melted snow. You can do fine with the typical powdery, puffy snow. Lots of mediums do that. This, definitely not. You're just not going to find that. And then see, here's where maybe some of that is being kicked up. Also trying to hide that, that crazy little grass thing. Uh, it's one of the things, I mean, it's not only Song Ice and Fire. GW does the same thing. Oh, gosh, I wish they didn't do that. All right, we got one more here. One more of these guys. Uh, we may have to mix up some more, but let's see what happens. So I'm just trying to get the main rock covered here. Like that. Spread it out. Grab some more. So I might have to do one last mix. I thought I had enough to cover all the bases, but, uh, you know, mix a little bit more, no big deal. This certainly looks a lot more interesting with the snow on it. I have to say that. And now I'm going to just, man, maybe, maybe there's enough. I don't know. Shove that down into some of the crevice there. Let's do this. And I'm putting that down underneath the uh, rock there just a bit. Some over here. Spread it out over that rock. Okay, I'm going to try and get the uh, as much as I can out of the brush here. Dry brush a little bit of snow onto that. Nice little blob of the snow here. See, I don't necessarily want to lose all those rocks over there. So what I might just do is shove it over here and only a little bit right here. You can see how I have virtually no snow left over on the palette. There's some of my... Um, my heavy gloss gel, but we need that for the movement tray. Okay, that is now covered nice and soft, I think. Again, if I felt like it, I could mix some more and make a, a more of a puffy snow thing right there, but maybe we don't want tons and tons of snow there. Maybe that's all we really need. So we'll let these guys set, let them dry a little bit, and then we'll go over to the movement tray and get some of our snow effects over there too. When it comes to the tray, it gets a little more complex because we want to have these icicles right hanging off of our branches, which means we got to do the melty snow there. 
which you know now we got to get into the different types of snow we also have to get some more of the grass tufts out here onto the movement tray so this is what we're looking for i'm going to do something like this now on this tray right here so i think what we'll do is we'll do i start with the trees might start with the trees because i can put the melty snow on there first then we'll put the uh, less melted snow on there all right let's uh start off like so get some of our here i'm going to push some of that off to the side get this ball rolling here So less of the snow effect, more of the uh, heavy gloss gel here. Maybe even a little more water. You can see that's a little bit more translucent, so it'll be a little bit more glossy. A little softer. Not going to use a ton of this. And here you'll be able to see where we're looking to have this, especially on the ends of our branches here where we want those icicles to be. So right there. And we'll have much less melted snow on the top of that, but for right now, looking for that melted snow look and well, again we're gonna be piling up some more down in that little crevice right there but boy here is a prime prime candidate for some melted snow i don't want to necessarily annihilate all of the the paint that's there either we don't want to do that. We want to leave some of that behind. See, there's just too much of it there. We'll take some of that away. So the icicles will be, I think, our next step after doing this. Okay, now we're ready to just mix up some of the regular snow here. Again, a little, uh, takes this, shove it over into here. It's a crushed glass, and it starts to get, to, you can tell the, whole flavor of that mix starts to change, doesn't it? Changes quite dramatically. See, it's a little bit crumbly. I'm gonna grab me a little more of this. Even a little more water, just to make that again flow a little bit better. And there we go. That's about, I think, the mix that I would like to see. And see, I've got some more of that, that the glass just sitting down here. It's all just kind of gathered together for me. Look at that. See, I can grab some of that. Now it's part of my mix. Instead of just being all over the place. And all it is is just a, like a Tupperware container lid. That's, that's all it is. So we got ourselves a nice little batch of it right there see if i can get some of this out of my brush and if you just hit this with the water right away uh you're really not going to mess up your brushes too much i know it's, it seems uh, like it really is going to destroy them but it, it doesn't do that and once again as i apply this here i don't want to completely wipe out all of my ground also don't want to overhang that too much because there are miniatures still got to get in here somehow. So I'm kind of doing more of a rough application here. And then we'll get in with our a brush that doesn't have all the snow kind of piled into it. See, look at this. See how we're pushing it up against the rock there? I know it, it can be a little bit hard to see because, well, it's white and the lights are there. I've even, I've turned off a bunch of the lights and turned other ones down, but it's it's the nature of the beast. It's going to be a little bit on the uh, 
shiny set a little harder to see yeah, maybe get a little bit of snow up there so again we have another nice little rock pile there but i really would like to not lose all those rocks there but probably we'll have to sacrifice some of those oh actually what i forgot not a huge deal just yet as i did forget some of my grass tufts so i'm going to just throw that in the water we're going to grab ourselves a couple of grass tufts i'm not going to do too many we'll just uh, throw out a couple over here different sizes Okay, boy, that glue is pretty amazing stuff. And I just, I love how it can take a really rough area and it just really grips onto it so well. I'm going to do one more, one or two more tufts, and say that's it. Again, it's not so much about the tufts. Good enough. So again, here you'll see, uh, wipe this away here. And the more, more of a cleaning I give it, see that the less of the stuff is left behind, not quite a big blob anymore. All right, let's get to the other side of this uh, central formation here. The cavalry bases, the one thing, or the cavalry movement trays, I guess. I mean, the, the bases is also have more space for doing fun things. But the movement trays, they really give you the chance to do lots of fun stuff. There's a big old area in the center. And uh, sometimes I've used the Green Stuff World texture plates. I've used the Green Stuff World uh you know, our, our texture rollers and made some spectacular sculpy texture for them. So again, kind of a spreading this thin. So instead of the, the typical blobs that you see, like the very neat little blobs of snow, see this is less of that. And I'm going to take the water here and spread that out. So it's almost like the snow is melted there just a bit. So it's a little bit translucent. Here, I'll just, uh, what's left here, I'm just going to dry brush that over the top of our grass tufts there. And then we're going to mix some more of our snow. As small as that jar is, you'll be absolutely shocked at just how much, <clears throat> how much snow you can get out of it. Okay, we might need to do one more batch of our snow. Mix this up nice and easy. We might just throw a little bit of snow out there. Another thing you could do is uh, you, you mix up your little batch of snow. Oh, by the way, this actually does come with a, a little kind of a spoon dispenser type thing. Uh, unfortunately, I'd use these at Adepticon as part of one of my classes, and I just kind of lost track of the little dispensers there. So that the actual real thing comes with a really nifty little dispenser that makes uh, pouring it out a little bit easier than what you're seeing me do here. So don't lose that because it does make your life a whole lot easier. So again, I'm just doing the bulky part here and then we'll come back with some of the finer stuff with our with a brush that doesn't have quite as much uh, junk on it as this one does. Spread that out here. Push that up against the rock, maybe up and over the rock. See that, like a snow formation there. You just can't do this with the other stuff. I've tried every imaginable type, all different companies. 
Uh, again, I'm not saying that that is bad stuff. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just I prefer. Wow, you can really see how translucent this is. Oh my gosh. Wow, that is. I was like, did I forget to put the snow on the tree here? No, I, I put the snow on the tree. That's just how translucent it is. So I get melted snow. Now then we're going to apply, obviously, our heftier stuff here. Now that, we don't want that to get down in there and get all hardened up. So what I'm going to do is uh, grab one of these brushes here. Again, just get that taken out of there and no problem. On this rock, I would like to do something like this. See how that carries out onto my tree? Well, tree branch, whatever. Again, that is the make it epic basing bit there. Bam, look at that. Now we can get a little bit more of this on our tree here. See a nice little snow pile there. And remember, we talked about having some on this part of our branch. Bam, look at that, huh? Uh, what the heck, we'll throw a little bit of it onto that trunk there. Okay, let's do this central tree. We we'll want to get that right down, boom, into there. Same that way. So again, we've got the uh, the melty stuff, but now we've also got some actual snow here. There's no snow piled up on the tree. What in the world are the icicles doing there? So I always suggest looking at references. Get yourself references. Snow on trees, snow on rocks, whatever. Look at those study those and, and just base is as much as you can on what you see it does it have to be completely exactly like that not necessarily it doesn't have to be but a little reference can go a long way i use them all the time I don't try to guess what something would look like. I just say, well, what does it look like? And then that way I can choose. I can say, well, okay, I would really love to be able to do this particular whatever. This particular effect. Here, let me get a little more snow out there. Not too much. Mm, that's much. There. Let's see what we can do with just that much. And as you can see, this stuff right here, I could just throw that back into the container. If I'm not going to use that, if I had mixed up all the snow, that would be a whole different story, though. So just a tiny bit more of my, my glass into this. So you can see it, we've done yeah, an awful lot here, and it's really not taken very much of our snow mix at all. I want to say, well, it's going to maybe depend on temperature, humidity, that sort of thing. I would give yourself 15, 20 minutes tops as far as a workable time with this stuff. You don't want to mix a ton of it and then try and spend hours with it because you're not going to have hours. You don't get that much time. So you don't want to, again, mix a whole big batch and then not be able to get the chance to use it all. I'm going to pile this here on our rock in the center. Same over here. So you can see just how much more brokenness of, up this is. You can see all the, the, some of the little rocks poking through. What, and I know because I've seen so many units of Song of Ice and Fire uh, the same goes for uh, Sigmar, Warhammer Fantasy, uh, what's it, what's it, 
kings of war, right? Especially on the movement trays. What do you see? You see those little puddles of snow. And they'd have these really neatly defined edges here. As you can see, the edges are not quite so neatly defined, are they? And it also gets pushed up against the rocks here. See, I'm just pulling this down. It just creates a more, to me, a much more realistic effect. Uh, maybe that's not what you're after, and and that's all. That's okay too. That's all right. But the whole point of this exercise here is to try and show you uh, how you can get some more realistic snow. Here, I'm gonna pop some of this down into here. This is also another way you don't necessarily have to use up all of your crushed glass snow, right? Because you have some of these little gaps here. So what we'll do is we'll let this stuff set, give it that 20 minutes-ish, something like that. And then we'll come back and we're going to try and do some icicles and have those hang on off the trees. And we're going to do those next. I'm going to see if I can get some of the some of these little icicles going here. Now what I'm going to try and do is condition some of my heavy gloss gel here. So just kind of mixing it up a little bit of the water again. There we go. Nice little, nice little batch of it here. It's not like we need a whole bunch of it. There. And you can see here we've almost kind of got something that looks like a bit of a drip right there. Let, let's just see what happens with that. And maybe we'll just throw that here. I'm going to try and get it against the back, that black background so that you can see it. And I'm going to try and drag that down this way. Take a little bit of that away. And I might just take my finger. Pull some of that down. It can take a little bit of finagling sometimes. And sometimes it doesn't quite work as you want. So I'm actually going to have maybe some back here too. There. You can see uh, just uh, kind of pulling on that with the brush. And now we got ourselves a little icicle right there. Remember, we can always add to these. We let these things dry or set or harden just a little bit. We can always go back and add some more. And actually, it's probably the easiest way to do the icicles. Just let it build up instead of trying to do it all in one shot. So see, we've got what looks almost like a little icicle shape right there. So what I tried to do was get a little bit of the uh, heavy gloss gel on there to start with. And that kind of becomes the glue. See how that hangs down now? So a little bit of uh, gloss gel on there to start with kind of forms the glue. Let me see if I can... I'm just trying to orientate this so that you got a darker background to see that against. So once you're trying to get a little bit of my glue, see there's a what looks kind of like an icicle. Now I was hoping to not, here we go, not have that one chunk on the end. So look at this, we got almost uh, three icicles here. This is just a... Just a craft brush right here. Nothing special about this brush. Making sure that's on the branch pretty solidly. What's nice about this stuff is that it's flexible, so it's not going to break. I've never had an icicle that I've made this way ever break off of a branch or anything like that. I can remember, uh, you know, companies they try to make the the clear plastic ones, and they're just, well, first of all, they're gigantic, 
I mean, they're absolutely enormous. And they're just, they're out of scale. At this point, icicles would be more like this. See a little, little drip like that one? That's what it would be. Not some gargantuan thing hanging off of a branch or whatever. So to me, those never looked right. And then, okay, great. You glue it on. How the, where are you going to glue it to? And then you still would have to put a bunch of gel like this around it anyway to make it look like it's actually melting into an icicle. So no matter what you do, you're going to have to do some of these steps that we're doing here anyhow. And we're going to have to do those steps anyway. See here, I'm going to take that. Stick that right on there. Try and get that to hang down here. Now it can be, a, see it's just too big. That is just too much. I might have it hang somewhere else, maybe off of this. And try and take some of that away. Okay, that I think is more under control. That is better. I'm trying to, oh, there, now you can see it. And see it against the black there. Now, the other thing you could do, especially once these things start to harden up a little bit, you could really thin these down or thin down your gel with some water. And it's almost like you can coat them with some additional water drops. Because what is an icicle? It's a bunch of water drops falling down in, in the same location again and again and again. And that's what extends them. So you could just let this stuff set and then work on your icicle and extend those icicles even further. So again, we got ourselves a nice icicle right there. Again, it's a little bit hard to orientate this. I know it can be difficult to see these things. It's not the easiest to see them because it's kind of white or it's, it's semi-translucent or whatever. That's why I'm going to have as many photos as I can in the, well, the closing credits especially. But you can also check out my Instagram. For right now, that's where a lot of the finished units or, or pictures of finished miniatures go. Uh, eventually, I'm going to try and make a website so that I can kind of put all those images there, plus things like the color charts maybe from uh, some of the tutorial videos. Just It's like a library, that's all. You're just a library of images, not any tutorials or anything like that. Just a place where you could go to see images of uh, finished stuff. It's kind of hard to put those into the videos. And of course, they're only on the screen for a few seconds. So unless you're going to pause it, you're not really going to see them. So it just seems to make sense to, to try that. All right, see that one? It's been on there a little bit, a little while. I think it could be safe to try and pull that down a little bit further here there and then i'm going to try and do is have a bit of an icicle hanging right off of this again i'm trying to orientate it so that the black is behind it oh, almost had it there um, there you go. Boom. Because we have this big old pile of snow up here. So, uh, and all of this is going to be clear. All of these things that you see hanging off here, these big old blobs, they're going to dry crystal clear. Again, I'm going to try and... See, that just is not, just not thin enough. No big deal. I'm going to try another something else here. See if I can't make a better icicle. I also want to have the different, uh, different lengths of icicle. That was another problem with a lot of the, uh, the 
plastic ones or whatever. We've even done this same type of thing for blood drips as well. So again, I'll have to wait for these things to dry and set and everything to uh, take the pictures and, and such. But there was something that I wanted to show you, another use for the crushed glass snow and the heavy gloss gel besides snow and all that sort of stuff. And that would be this right here. It's a diorama. This is part of one of my Patreon series here. And I'd been wanting to try this for a while. So this waterfall right here is the same heavy gloss gel we're using right now. But you see the, the foam areas here? All it is is just crushed glass snow mixed with the exact same stuff that we used here to do the water. Same stuff we used to make the snow. So there's that. And see, it's a... It's got that body there, so there's even, you can see the splashes of it in the water, so to speak. And all that water, that was just as white as all of the icicles that we just did. So again, what we'll do is uh, I'll have as many photos as I can of the unit and maybe some of the individual stuff. Right, some of the individual stuff. I do appreciate everybody watching this video. I know it's it's not a painting video per se, but trying to introduce you to stuff like this, to these ideas, and everybody else. I'll put some links to the Armored Wolf Replica Nature into the, uh, into the description of the video. If you could do the subscribe and like and the bell thing, all that kind of stuff, that really does help the channel a lot. Obviously, YouTube has its algorithms, and that really does help with the algorithm. So thanks again, everybody, and I'll catch you on the next basing video.